Hey, welcome back, everybody. It's time again to Let's Talk Real Estate, your weekly BS with Barry Saywitz about the current commercial real estate market here in Southern California. As we take a no BS look at both sides of the issues driving the market today, to find the best solutions going forward. Hey, Barry, you got some good solutions this morning? Let's hope so. Good morning, Paul. Thanks. Uh, We're back here again, and uh, I'm excited to be here. We have an exciting show this morning. Uh, For our viewers and our listeners out there, I'm sporting my uh, post-COVID beard. Uh, My razor broke, and I've been lazy, so... Uh, we're going to talk some real estate, but before we do, today's shout-out I want to give to the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, good job, fellas. They are moving on. Let's hope we see them here back in a month or so for the Super Bowl. Uh, let's get to it. Uh, I am Barry Saywitz, president of the Saywitz Company and manage, pa- managing partner of Barry Saywitz Properties. And if it's one thing that I've learned in my 30-plus years in real estate, it's to look at both sides of the equation and try and come up with the best solutions in real estate. And today is no different. With me today, uh, my guest, Bill Shopoff, CEO of Shopoff Realty Investments. Bill, welcome to the show. Thank you, Barry. So thanks for coming on. Uh, You are a longtime resident of Orange County and have been in the real estate environment, uh, both here in Southern California and elsewhere, for a long, long time. I guess I want to start. I have a lot of things I want to talk to you about today, but uh, first thing I want to talk about is uh, over time. I mean, you've been here a long time. You've seen a lot of growth in Orange County and throughout Southern California over the years. Um, how has Orange County evolved as an economy and as a place to do real estate and build things over the course of the last 10 or 20 years? Yeah, I've been here a little over two decades and probably started working here about 25 years ago or so. Um, you know, this is a this is a pretty dynamic market, and I think, uh, you know, over that time, it's, you know, maybe if you go back beyond 20 years ago, this was kind of a secondary marketplace to Los Angeles, and it's now evolved into very much a world class marketplace, in and of it, it's, its own. I mean, it's it's certainly, uh, um, y- you know, maybe started as a bedroom community to LA, but actually, I think it's actually the other way. Now there's more jobs here, more people commute into into Orange County every day then go from Orange County to Los Angeles. So it's taken a yeah. pretty big shift over time. Yeah, and I find that the dynamics of the economy here are very diverse. You have tech, you have healthcare, you have real estate, you have tourism. And so there's a lot of reasons to want to be located as a company in Orange County. And as a result of that, people need housing and offices and, and warehouses to house their businesses. Well, on top of all the great business opportunities here, uh, I think there's a lot of people who perceive the lifestyle here versus in uh, our, our neighboring communities to be uh, quite good. So uh, when my friends come down from LA, they're always questioning why they don't move their families and their businesses down here. So yeah. we think we've got a pretty special place here in Orange County. Yeah, no question. And so if we fast forward a little bit, let's go back to the beginning of COVID over the last uh, 18 to 24 months. How has the real estate development side of your business been affected uh, from the beginning of COVID uh, to today in terms of slowing things down or making it more difficult to get projects off the ground? Well, I think I think initially when COVID started to become reality, and, and then I recall I was actually uh, doing a training with a new employee the day the governor decided to uh, shut, basically shut the state down yeah. uh, back in, in, in March of 2020. And it shut things down. I mean, we sent everybody home within like two days. Uh, we were fortunately pretty well geared up to, to, to work remote, even though we weren't. Uh, we were, you know, we were generally office workers. Uh, we, we, we adapted to the work part pretty quickly, but, you know, business really took a slam. Uh, our, our business with our home builders essentially stopped in midstream. We had, uh, we had probably a half a dozen land sales that uh, were, were geared up to close. Uh, those all stopped and just the financing went away. Um, and then we focused really on what I would call defense. Uh, what are we going to do to make sure people pay rent? Um, yeah. I started talking to my asset management team and questioning you know, where what, what's going to happen. And, you know, we were trying to forecast it. And the reality is, is that the worst did not occur. Uh, I think our worst month, we collected 86% of our scheduled rent roll. And we were, you know, that was in, in April. And by August, we were back to collecting over 100% of our rent roll, getting the back rents that we, we'd lost from, you know, August, to, from April to July. So grateful for that. Uh, and then pretty quickly, I would say, you know, so we shut down in May. By, you know, even late April, we'd already figured out how to do uh, project approvals by Zoom with various 
planning commissions and city councils. I think we got one of the first planning commission approvals on a project uh, over Zoom. And uh, then the builders came back and they came back in with, uh, you know, a pretty big force. And we had a, you know, pretty robust year, had, you know, one of our better years in, uh, in 2020. Uh, I think we had 12 closings in, uh, in December. Uh, everybody trying to get everything done at the end of the year uh, and, and sold some land for some record prices. Um, so I was very pleased with where it was and then geared us up for, you know, what was really a great 2021 for us. Yeah. And, and now going forward into 2022, I guess I'll ask the question I've asked other folks that have been on the show. How does it look? I mean, I feel like and it sounds like everybody's back. They're sort of past the I'm going to die from COVID kind of mentality. And people have to get on with their lives and their businesses and try and move forward. The businesses are having to figure out how to adapt to, to you know, the new world. Uh, are we going to be hybrid? Are we going to be back in the office? You know, I've seen some, quite a bit of stats recently. Uh, office leasing is up uh, kind of across the country. Uh, we actually just took a new lease space. Uh, I, you know, our lease was up the end, the end of last month. And we took a new space. We'll be moving here uh, the end of, of January. And, and uh, you know, we took about the same amount of space, but, but differently configured uh, to try to ac- accommodate uh, getting some people back in the office. Yeah. And so let's, I mean, you do a lot of different things in terms of the investment side of, uh, uh, of the business uh, and the development side. You're in the apartment market. You're in the industrial world, office, retail, really all facets of it. Um, so I want to break it down a little bit. Uh, first, we'll talk about the apartment sector. I know you have the project, the uh, uh, one uptown Newport. Did I get that right? I always mix it up, but yep, one, yeah, one, one, yes, one uptown Newport is it's it's uh, at our project uptown Newport Village. That's we have 458 units over there. We're I don't know most recent numbers probably 97 ish, 98 percent occupied. Um, and that project's really uh, what I would consider to be at the high end in terms of quality of project, certainly a much newer project, and then in terms of the rents that you're getting there. We're probably getting amongst the highest uh, rents in, in Orange County, uh, possibly some of the stuff at Fashion Island, maybe doing a little bit better on, on whole dollar rents, but I think on rents per square foot, I think we're uh, leading the marketplace currently. Yeah, and, and for those of our uh, viewers and listeners out there in terms of, of where this is, it's on Jamboree uh, and well, I'll call it MacArthur, but uh, basically on the gateway into uh, Newport Beach from Irvine. And that corridor really with the new development that's going on there from the university, from Hogue Hospital, uh, with the new hotel, with your development there really is uh, become sort of a main thoroughfare uh, for business and for retail and, and all of it. Well, certainly uh, the UCI new new medical complex, one point three billion dollar complex with twenty five hundred jobs, essentially across the street from us, certainly isn't going to hurt our uh, our ability to stay occupied. Uh, in a, in adjacent to the to the one uptown project we have, we we also have uh, thirty condos, and in in fact we just recently sold three of those condos to uh, doctors at the UCI facility. Yeah, congratulations. So, Yeah, and, and I think that uh, it's just a testament to what's uh, going on in that particular area, the growth of the university and uh, just in the airport area in general. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of apartment rents in general, uh, I, I think the general theme that we've talked about on other shows is really rents sort of, uh, I want to say, uh, through the roof. I mean, uh, it's really been a very difficult market if you're a renter in terms of fi- trying to find opportunities and then find it at a reasonable price uh we you know we kind of moved rent rates modestly throughout covid because we were in lease up we got to lease up and uh i think in september october we did a 10 percent rent rate bump across the board so um in more in some units um it's been uh, pretty remarkable how uh, how well that market has done and i think what i would say is is unique is I've never experienced in my life where both the rental market and the for sale markets were as robust as they were at the same time. Yeah. Typically, you see one or the other ebb or flow a little bit, and we're seeing you know the for sale market you know equally robust. 
And, and, and I'm curious as to your thoughts, but to me, it's really just an, an issue of supply and demand. The housing market is very tight. There's very limited number of opportunities. So some people are renting. Some people just don't want to own. They think the market may bust or peak out, so they continue to rent. And there's just not enough uh, housing out there that's good housing for people to be able to choose from. Look, it's extremely difficult to get new housing approved in Orange County or anywhere else in California. Uh, it's a very bureaucratic process. Uh, it, you know, it's typically going to take you, you know, a year minimum to get it approved, and then it's another year or two to actually deliver that unit. It more likely, it's more a, a two to five year process for a typical deal. Uh, so that's going to that keeps the the damper on on new competition. I, you know, I, I guess that's good if you're an existing property owner. It's unfortunate if you're uh, if you're if you're a consumer of that product. Yeah. Let's shift gears for a little bit to the industrial, which is also uh, as hot as it comes. Uh, rental rates through the roof, land prices through the roof, purchase prices for finished product also at, at I, what I believe an all-time high. And in Orange County, very limited product uh, in terms of the industrial market. We're seeing a lot of repurposing of either office buildings or flex buildings, e- even into industrial for highest and best use. And then out in the Inland Empire, still continuing to grow at a pretty rapid pace. And I, I know you have projects out there. Yeah, the, the industrial market has certainly been um, at least one of maybe two darling child, children during COVID. Uh, the market has just skyrocketed. Very impressed. Uh, you know, if I rolled the clock back maybe four or five years ago, we were actually buying older industrial for residential uh, to convert to residential. Uh, today, you wouldn't be able to do that because because the industrial land prices are now out competing the residential prices. Yeah. Uh, in fact, you've had uh, you know both both developers, but you've had Amazon make direct purchases of two, uh, at least two that I'm aware of uh, facilities. That uh, one was some raw land. The other, they recently bought an office building up in Brea. Uh, that, uh, you, you know, they paid a price that I wouldn't say was too high, but it was too high. A developer couldn't have paid that price, but certainly a user can. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that's going on in the market, too, is people like me, you know, we've got to have margin. We've got to have profit margin in there. But, you know, I can't say that Amazon could ever pay too much money. If they need something, they're just going to buy it because they need it. And do you find that the competition for the industrial side of things is from a user or from foreign money or from other developers or investment funds or is it a combination of all of it well you've got a you know essentially fully leased market both here in orange county and out of the in the inland empire so every time something becomes available prices are going to get bid up either as a buyer or as a tenant uh and in the tenant demand is incredibly robust there is substantially more demand than there's product in the marketplace today. Uh, and so tenants are getting pressed to pay higher and higher rent rates. Uh, that turns around to the developer paying higher land prices. Uh, there was a recent land sale just down the street from our Newport pro- Uptown Newport project, a uh, project that was previously approved for you know, office and hotel, and it sold to an industrial developer who paid, I think, $6.2 million an acre for industrial land. It's kind of a shocking price for somebody like you or I who's been around for a while. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they'll make the numbers work, I feel certain. Yeah, and the tenant that goes in there is going to wind up paying a pretty penny to justify that price. Yeah, they're probably paying more than, uh, you know, on a net basis, probably paying more than the office rents. And it's interesting because, you know, you, real estate is a cycle. So you look back at the recession in 2010, 11, 12, and you look at rents out in the Inland Empire, and you were seeing rents in the 30, 40 cent range. Uh, and now you're seeing stuff at, at more than double that and maybe even triple. Yeah, I think probably like Western Riverside County and Western San Bernardino, prices are now peaking over a dollar. Um, we, we, we've got a project out at, uh, we call uh, I-10 Logistics, which is the, the 10 near the 60 freeway. Um, you know, we've seen rents move from 50 cents a year ago to something approaching, you know, 80 to 90 cents today. Uh, that's just a, 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 a rental jump that I've never seen in my career. And, and if you're a tenant, I mean, we have a brokerage company, so we're dealing with it every day. We're talking to clients and CEOs of companies. If you can't find what you need, then you have to go with what you got. And either you stay 
And if staying, uh, you're going to pay an increase in rent and you have an antiquated facility, if I'm going to pay an increase in rent, I guess I go to a nicer, newer, more efficient facility if that's what I got to do. Yeah, clearly. And the, the, the one thing about industrial is there's a big difference between, you know, an older generation product and today's product because tenants aren't just aren't just renting floor space. They're renting volume. Sure. So, you know, we you know, if you've got a 40 foot clear height building and you're competing in that marketplace with a 30 foot, uh, it's not really even competition because the tenant who needs that 40 foot building won't He's even look, won't yeah. even look at the 30 foot building because yeah. he his racking systems don't even work there. So it's a, it's a, you know, it seems like it's a very simplistic market, but it's actually become a very highly specialized business uh, and and uh, you, you know sometimes it pays to be uh, in the right place at the right time, but it wasn't exactly an overnight success story. Our our project out there, we're talking about how difficult it is. We began the entitlement process in 2008, got our entitlements in 2017, and got sued, and finally we're ready to build by uh, you know late 2020. Yeah, that's so. a it's a heck of a cycle. Yeah, and and but in a general sense, do you find that building industrial without all the drama? Um, if it goes somewhat smoothly, is it a quicker cycle than building the apartments and the residential? Oh, definitely. I mean, look, you're not making designer choices. Uh, it's 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 a much simpler build process. You know, you can build a building in, you know, 12 to 18 months, depending on the scale of the building, uh, versus, you know, building, you know, even garden apartments today are going to take 18 months. Uh, if you're building, you know, wrapper podium, that's probably more 24 to 30 month build cycle. Uh, and you've got to go through a longer lease up. I mean, if you've got a tenant, your lease ups a day. Right. I mean, we've got a 1.8 million square feet in two buildings, and those will, you know, be occupied, you know, in single days, not going over a, you know, a 12 month lease up period. And, so, and assuming you do your job well, you get a credit tenant, then you know your your risk of somebody not paying or falling down is hopefully not so much. Yes, yeah, pretty pretty much zero. And if it does, then you fill it with another tenant right now. Sure. It's a great time. You know, it'll change. It's all markets will ebb and flow, but right now, now it's a great time to be in the space. And do you find that um, the markets outside of Southern California are benefiting from the fact that the market here is so hot, whether that's a Phoenix or a Vegas or a Texas? Yeah, I mean, we're, we are seeing some spillover. I think some of it's spillover where people are being priced out of California. Uh, but a lot of it is just the local market demand is that with e-commerce, uh, you're just having to get supplies and products closer to the consumer so these these buildings are being built all over the country and so some of that spillover if you look at a phoenix market uh we just acquired some land outside of phoenix and buckeye and you know we think that's a, a, a great marketplace for us uh looking for more over there but uh but i don't really think of it as a is 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 that that tenant is coming from california by and large some but most of it's just people who in need America. to be in that marketplace yeah so uh, let's talk about repurposing land uh, while we're talking about it. I know you recently made an acquisition in Fountain Valley. You bought some, I'll call agricultural, long-time agricultural land. Um, tell us about that project and what you have planned for that. Yeah, we've done we've done several of those. So that we we just bought a bought a eighteen and a half acre piece uh, on Euclid, right across from the uh, Mile Square Park. So you know, great local amenity, you know, neighboring amenity. Uh, it's been historically ag land. Uh, the city rezoned it to, to residential and is contemplating a higher density. Um, we'll, we'll wait and see what the city's plans are. Uh, but, but we have residential plan for it. We'll, we'll wait a little bit to see where the city comes out and in what type of densities they, they want as to how we, uh, how we organize our, our project. But uh, we're very bullish on it. We love the, we love the sub-market. Uh, Fountain Valley is an extremely desirable place where you've had you know people who've lived there for generations and the ability to provide some new housing in that in that marketplace is very exciting for our firm yeah well and i'm assuming by the time you get your stuff going they'll finish the 405 and it'll be smooth sailing let's hope yeah that should be done and, and we've got another project up in fullerton where we actually bought uh bought kind of a decrepit retail center and we're doing the same thing and we're converting that largely to residential we'll we'll, we'll demo most of the center keep a little bit of it, relocate some of the tenants, um, and, and uh, you know, downsize the size of the retail and add about 100, and I think we're, we're adding about 150 homes into that marketplace that definitely need them. And, and do you find that the projects that you're bidding on, that you're looking at buying, 
that your competition is other people that are looking at repurposing the asset or uh, are, are they just looking at it because uh, I'd assume that you have the capacity to pay a premium over the existing what the existing asset is worth in place if you're going to repurpose it versus somebody who just buy it as a retail center or an industrial building yeah I, I think we generally see that we got to pay a little bit more than what it would be worth just as a straight retail deal. Generally, the sellers got some idea. Uh, the retail deal we bought in in, in in Fullerton, the you know the seller had prepped it for this. He had some some cancellation and and, and uh, you know reconstruction clauses in his leases that that helped us. So it definitely you know allowed us to pay up a little bit. I don't know whether we, you know we probably paid a five or ten percent premium, but there were other people looking to do what we were doing that we were competing with. So. Look, there's a, there's a lot of investment capital in the marketplace today. So, you know, every deal that we're involved in, we got competition. Yeah. Uh, you know, when somebody brings me something that's off market, I almost shudder because I I might rather have a marketed deal where the seller's gotten exposure to what the real pricing is than an off market deal where they get to make up what they think the pricing is. Oh, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Uh, we live that every day where a guy just says, I'm, I think it's worth X. And you're like, where'd you come and, up with that? Is out of the and, sky? And first of all, with the internet, if a broker's got a hold of it and it's off market, he's told at least two people, which means you have an auction. <laughs> right, right. No, I agree. So on the retail side of things, uh, certainly that was hit. I, I'm, I'm going to say retail and office were certainly hit the hardest with COVID, and, and uh, retail is sort of taking a new form in terms of coming back and, and recovering. How do you see that sector going forward? Well, I think, I think good quality retail is here to stay. Good neighborhood retail that serves, you know, serves their community with thoughtful uh, tenanting will will do great. Uh, but it but it will change complexion over time. Uh, it's going to change the you know the tenant base will change, um, and and I think you know it will be reinventing itself you know for a while. I think where retail really is challenged is regional malls that you know. That's a, that's a world of the haves and the have-nots. Yeah. The great regional malls, you know, look the the uh, fashion islands of the world, they're going to do fine. Uh, e- even though they've suffered a bit, but in long term, it's going to do fine because it's a because it's an entertainment destination as much as shopping, or South Coast Plaza, for example. But I think some of the others, they're going to get hit, and they, they will find a new life. Um, you know, I think they'll 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 kind of wind down and then find something else to do, uh, whether that's residential, uh, industrial. We've seen, we've seen a number of people buy uh, some malls for, for both of those uses. And we are uh, we're, we're, we're currently uh, uh, working on several of those. We've, we've, uh, we've bought, uh, you know, we, we bought a, uh, up in Santa Barbara, we bought a, a Nordstrom store that uh, was on the, on the end of the Paseo Nuevo Mall. And what will you do with that? Uh, we'll turn that actually, our, our objective is, primarily creative office and a little bit of retail. Uh, and then we have some up in Northern California and we're looking at those for uh, primarily residential. Gotcha. So. And so how, what do you, uh, for our viewers and listeners out there, I mean, what keeps you up at night in terms of concerns going forward with the economy and the real estate market? Is it supply chain? Is it interest rates? Is it stock market volatility? Is it the government? Is it any of that? Probably all of that, <laughs> and then I'll then I'll add inflation to that. You know, the the I think the the big mystery question today. Um, I I think you and I are pretty much contemporaries, Barry. That uh, you know, I remember uh, my father worked for a Fortune 500 company, and I remember him having to ask the government to change prices on products. That there were price controls, uh, and and you know that's not something that most people have a, a great memory of. I think it's going to be transitory. I think the supply chain gets fixed and things and, and things settle down. But if it doesn't, you know, and, and this thing continues, uh, you, you know, then I, I, w- I would say bets are off or bets are different. Um, interest rates, you know, appear to be, you know, certainly the Fed has foreshadowed an upward tick in rates. I think that the market can clearly take that. Um, you know, will that will that change cap rates a lot? Or a little. I, I'm thinking a little. Um, there's still a lot of there's still a lot of money chasing yield, and, uh, and and real estate provides a great place for that. So, and and I think the other thing of why real estate's going to do well, certainly the stock market's done well, which has moved, you know, the the denominator for pension funds. 
is, is the bigger the base is, the more they've got to put into real estate. But they're also all trying to still increase their allocation to real assets, to alternatives. And so I think real estate has become, you know, over our careers, very institutionalized. There's still a lot of it controlled by, you know, private investors. But the margin where, where, where pricings change is at the margin is being driven a lot by the institutionalization of real estate, uh, both through REITs and through, through uh, pension and endowments. Yeah, and, and I think we've talked about it on other shows, you know, uh, the people who are in it for the long haul, the individual investor, the investment group, you buy something today, 10, 20, 30 years from now, it, it should look like a good deal, regardless of the ups and downs of the markets. The interesting side of it is the investment side where you're buying and you're getting a yield and then you're flipping it. Um, you've got to be very conscious about where the market's uh, moving for sure. Yeah, look, for, for the better part of my 30 years, although I own assets that I that I have owned for a very long time and will continue to own. A lot of our core business has been a trading plant business. Uh, a lot of our partners are, you know, IRR, short-term multiple driven. And so that's driven the evolution of my business. Uh, like I said, I separately invest for the long term. Uh, but, uh, you know, you have to be careful if you're looking at this as with with a short horizon. Yeah. Uh, but I because things will change. I mean, look, the... The market, the stock market will go up one day, it'll go down the other. Um, I, I don't even candidly look at the market on a daily basis. I kind of look weekly. I look at the interest, you know, I look, I look at where the tenure is. Uh, but I try to look at my world as, as having a longer runway, and hence I try to not be distracted by what's going on day to day and uh, in, in looking at good trends in real estate. But uh, I think what I'm hearing from you is, is kind of what we heard from a number of other guests is, 2022 still on the uptick there's still opportunities out there still a way for people who are uh, smart and creative to make money in real estate we're uh, we're extremely bullish for 2022 uh, we will capture some uh, we will harvest some profits uh, but we will also uh, redeploy a, a significant amount of capital this year uh, into new opportunities um, you know both here in in Southern California We've got a little bit of business in Northern California. But we're also in, uh, you know, neighboring states. We're in Colorado, Las Vegas, uh, Reno, Phoenix markets, uh, and, and, and we're very bullish about uh, kind of the Western United States. Well, good. It sounds like you're active, and uh, certainly uh, wish you continued success for you and your company going forward into 2022. And as always, I appreciate your insight and chatting with you, and appreciate you coming on the show. Um, for uh, everybody here, uh, I want to thank uh, Paul, our announcer, the whole team at uh, OC Talk Radio, our producer, Sophia. Um, we will see you next week here on Let's Talk Real Estate. Uh, again, I'm Barry Saywitz, president of the Saywitz Company. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again. Thank you, Barry. you have it you've been listening to let's talk real estate your weekly bs with barry saywitz about the current state of the real commercial real estate market right here in southern california on orange county's only community radio station oc talk radio streaming live from our studio here at the university of california irvine's beal applied innovation center